scripture together. We do have some special guests who are part of our congregation, but who are sharing today as a part of the sermon. So I'm excited for that. And we're just glad you're here to worship. There's a lot of information in the bulletin about things coming up, and I hope you'll take a look at that. Remember, if you're in your cars and you want to listen to worship in your car, you can turn to 107.9 FM. I want to remind you, you have offering envelopes that serve many purposes. We do hope you'll give of your tithes and offerings to us through those envelopes, but also please write the names of everyone worshiping with you this morning, as well as any prayer request you have, we want to continue to be in prayer for you and to know how we can serve you through prayer. Reminder that right after worship, all of our small groups will be meeting. We have um, youth meeting are probably right up here or where they met last week, tweens, fourth through seventh grade back here, and then our pre-K four through Charles who have been impacted by hurricanes, impacted by flooding, by loss of their love and support during this time for we know that there have been times when we have been in need through tornadoes and through natural disasters and times that people have cared for us and so we do the same for those in need at this time amen
Please join me in a posture of prayer as we lift our joys and concerns to our loving God. Let us pray. God of all creation, we give you praise for your steadfast love working in, through, and around us, cultivating the fruit of your spirit and helping us to know your eternal presence. Guide us as we strive to demonstrate your love to those we encounter. God of all people, Sow your seeds of love and peace in our neighborhoods, our communities, and our nation. Inspire us to speak your goodness for both people and planet, and help us to cultivate a peace where all children might thrive and grow in the virtues of your name. O oh God, our loving parent and provider, we bring to you our concerns and prayers for those who suffer through illness and grief. We ask that your healing may come to those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. You alone, O oh God, can make us whole. Christ, you have become a humble servant to show by love, caring for others, to teach people about God's gracious love, and to invite everyone into God's kingdom. Open your hearts to the fullness of your joy as we celebrate the many blessings within this community of faith. We give thanks for all who serve in and through this church, for our pastor, our staff, those who lead small groups, Sunday school classes, our musicians who lead us in worship, all of those who work with the children and youth, all who serve others through many missions and ministries. Help us to find our place in ministry and to fulfill the calling that you give each of us. Unite us around your, our vision to make disciples and connect people to you, O oh Lord. Bless our work as we seek to be part of what you want to bless. And now, let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, deliver us from evil, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we turn to our holy scriptures. Today's reading from the letter of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. If then there is an encouragement in Christ... Any consolation for love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, 
make my joy complete. Be the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to our own interest, but to the interest of others. Thanks be to God. As Donna joins us on stage and Donna and David prepare to share with us, I just want to give a little introduction. In the scripture we just heard this morning, Paul is writing to the Philippians during a challenging time in his life. He is imprisoned because of his proclamation of the good news of Jesus, and so he is sending encouragement to the church at Philippi. As he writes to them, he highlights of a unified church. First and foremost, they must understand that Christ is who unites them and their number one commitment should be to live lives that proclaim Jesus as Lord. He also tells them to focus on their love for one another, never acting selfishly, but instead always putting others' needs before their own. I believe that his advice to the Philippians highlights the work and commitment you all have shown over the last seven months throughout the pandemic. While we've had to do ministry in new ways, while we've had to rely on God and one another to lead and to be the church in new ways, you all have done this beautifully. Today, as we celebrate Laity Sunday, the work of you all as the hands and feet of Christ at Valonia UMC, I invite you to hear from David and from Donna, who have served in ministries that you all have supported and participated in over the last few months. And I hope you are inspired by this work that glorifies God. Can y'all hear me okay? First off, before I start talking about for Lady Sunday, um, I wanted to recognize our Pastor Lauren here. So in case you didn't know, today is Pastor Appreciation Day. And so I uh, got her a little something to tell her how much we really appreciate her. I cannot imagine starting a new job. Uh, especially in a church as a pastor during the pandemic. So, will y'all give her a round of applause, please? Thank you, Pastor Lauren. Okay, I need to take the mask off if I'm going to talk, sorry. So, um, Pastor Lauren asked me to talk today, and I wanted to just tell you a little bit about uh, the impact that Bologna United Methodist Church has had on me. Um, we came here in 2000 in the summer, and um, as most of you, a lot of you probably remember the first people that you've met here at our church, and for me, it was Mr. Gerald Coker, Skeeter Frazier, and then I remember meeting, uh, I may not remember all of y'all, but Lisa Nash and Melissa Freeman at the very beginning. And Melissa asked me uh, if I wanted to help with the craft because I had my kids with me. And so she, so I said yes, and I'm still doing it today, 17 years later, <laughs> working with the kids and the crafts. And, um, and then Sharon asked me if I wanted to help with um, be a Sunday school coordinator. And so I said yes, and still hanging on doing that. So I love working with the kids. Um, and as you know, we started several years ago doing the Wednesday night uh, class dinner and classes where we actually go and pick up the kids, and that has been a blessing. The kids, um, they get to help after dinner. We, they take turns cleaning up, and then also they get to make their own the snack bags that go out for, um, with the kids after classes are over when we take them home. Um, but that they really enjoy helping and being a part of the church family. But we could not do that Wednesday night program with lots of great volunteers, uh, teachers in the classrooms, all the people that help to cook the dinners. Uh, it's really a group effort, and we really appreciate that. That's those all those people working are being disciples and helping. To, for our people in the community and our church too. So now,
bring the food uh, bags to the kids in the neighborhood where we used to pick them up. And we're also taking them a brown bag meal, sandwich, chips, and cookie, uh, some kind of dessert or fruit. And so, and we also take them activity sheets and lessons uh, that they would normally get on Wednesday night as well. And also one other thing is we also give them a free book. Um, thanks to Melissa Freeman, she's able to help us get several books and all the kids are getting free books at least once a month and they love having their own book. <clears throat> and it's, we're really thankful that we're able to go outside into our community and help. Um, we're seeing a lot of the kids that we used to have in our program, but we're also seeing new kids and new families. Just right, you know, just 30 seconds from our church, a minute, we're, we're taking uh, things to them as well and meeting them. So that's nice that we're having uh, that opportunity to make new relationships. So even though we are not in our church building, the children are still learning to become disciples of Jesus Christ. We are seeing it each week as we drive through the neighborhoods, as the kids, uh, we give them paper and uh, ask them to make cards and they make the cards for people that are sick and they give those back to us. They help take food and bags to their um, sisters or brothers or their neighbors that can't be there for the van. Um, as they thank all of us on the van for what we do, it's amazing how many people of the kids actually come up and say as we're handing them they say thank you for what we're doing um and some of our our kids from our church have had been doing videos uh to go with our online worship and also we see we see jesus christ in them in discipleship as we see them just waiting on us they're waiting every week because they know we're going to be coming rain or shine and a little funny on that is ask Melissa Freeman about the rain because she has the raincoat. She gets to go out and go to the doors with, with the food when it's pouring down raining. So we appreciate her doing that. <laughs> so um, here's an example of discipleship, helping of kids helping Jesus. Just this past week, Stephen and Harley Mercer came up and took all the food we got from the food bank upstairs to the food pantry room and then act, and then put together the 50 bags for the Frank Mitchell Intermediate School. Uh, later that afternoon, Mason Westby came and picked up all the bags and took them to the school. Um, and Harley's mom shared later that Harley said that it, he was honored to be able to make the food bags for the school, which was awesome to hear that. Uh, lastly, here's an example of just a few of one week here at our church. Last week, Jean Cure and Anna Oversee made 55 sandwiches for the brown bag meals to be delivered on Wednesday night. Also, Karen Seeds made cookies for the bags, and Melissa Freeman put together the snack bags for delivery with the bag with the brown bags. The funds to purchase the food for these snack bags was provided for all of, from all of you that were able to help. All of this is going on weekly and every week it's different people helping. You all are making a difference and we just want to thank you all for being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Thanks everyone. Okay, she, um, Pastor Lauren asked me if I would say a little bit. Um, I think that Tiff and I and, and the girls came about the same time Donna and them came. We came uh, here, I think 2003, somewhere around that area. Uh, and when we had our, our meeting uh, with Pastor Lauren about the different, uh, just her getting to know us a little bit, it was kind of weird because I was in a group with the Garners and some other uh, folks that, and Tiff and I were the oldest members in the in the group, which I didn't consider us the oldest members. That was kind of weird because uh, we had been here about 16 years. So um, with the exception of one year where we moved away, but we were still coming back up here about every two weeks, <laughs> seeing family and coming to church. So um, I've, I've just been blessed being here. Um, 
I've been music director a couple of times uh, and led music and uh, just been a part of the music part of this uh, church ever since I've been here pretty much. Uh, and it's just been, been a blessing to me because um, even though the pastors do a great job with the sermons, Pastor Lauren's my fifth pastor here at this church, which is really weird uh, that I've gone through five. <laughs> and uh, so, um, but, you know, even though they do a great job on the sermons, sometimes the sermons I feel like don't speak to me at times, but a lot of the times that the music does. And uh, it just it just warms my heart to be able to be a part of this and to be able to do this. Uh, when the pandemic hit, um, of course, we went online with Pastor James, and um, I missed out on the music part of it. I wasn't getting to sing every Sunday in the choir. I wasn't getting to do any specials with Jeremy or anything like that. And it just um, it just didn't. I mean, online didn't mean as much to me uh, as it did being in person and actually being a part of it. And so I think that's the only part that maybe tested my faith a little bit is uh, I wasn't a part of, of what was going on. So, um, and then when Pastor James decided, okay, we're gonna start doing some bluegrass things and we need you to come up and play and all that kind of stuff. That was awesome, that was great. And I got to get back in, into it. And then um, of course, Pastor James left and Pastor Lauren comes and it's just, it was, then it was just Jeremy and, and Sarah again and, um, and then, Sarah and I got to talk and she said, come up here and sing. She said, do this. And so I started coming back and started singing and it just, it just really made, made me feel the sense of normalcy that I needed uh, to get back into faith and get back to my church. Um, uh, Pastor Lauren asked the question uh, where I've seen God and, and where I've seen God is that we haven't stopped. We haven't slowed down. Uh, we didn't let this affect us. We've gone right into online worship. We still do our Wednesday night stuff. Uh, they still deliver the meals to the kids. Uh, we still do uh, our our Bible study that meets that usually met on Wednesday nights. Uh, we switch to Saturdays and we're still doing our thing. We meet out at John and Laura's every Saturday and we still do our 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 fellowship and our worship and 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 that where I've seen God's not letting us stop. It's not letting this pandemic stop us from doing what we're doing. And um, so I see that he's still present with us um, in all that. As far as the outdoor service, when we first decided to do the outdoor service and everything, I, hes I didn't hesitate when they said, okay, we're gonna start doing outdoor service. I said, okay, then we need a new sound system. We need this, we need that, we need, you know, and it just kicked in. Um, I used to run sound for a rock band when, I, when we lived down in Sheridan. And so this was kind of second nature to me. It's kind of like, okay, I can do this. And so we got the equipment, we did what we needed to do. And now we sit here today being able to do this outdoor service and, and see more of you guys and, and be a little bit more personable with you instead of it just being on a screen at the house. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a great thing. And I know pe people, I don't know, and sometimes I hope I don't offend any of you that are helping us set up and things like that, because I try not to do that, but I get in the zone of setting this stuff up, and it just, I just go, and it's not, it's, I've got a plan on the way to do it, and so thank you for your help, and I'm glad you volunteered to help me, but don't take offense, so I go, no, I'm good, I got this, you know, we're because I've just got a set way of doing it, and it's just, it's, I mean, that's my teaching background. Sorry, it's a set way of doing things. <laughs> so um, I kind of get that way, and I don't mean to be short if I am, but I just want it to be a great experience for everybody that comes out every Sunday. And just um, and I know this is going to have to end soon because the weather is going to get it to where we can't do it outside and, and things like that. And I just, I'm, I'm not too happy about that. So, um, But I just love you guys, and this church has been great to us as always, and um, look forward to keep serving. Thank you, David, and thank you, Donna, for sharing. Um, I hope you all realize as they share that this is just a glimpse of what we've all been doing together. Um, just as Donna gave a glimpse of who all 
has um, helped or what it takes to make one Wednesday van delivery of meals to um, those that live down the street for outdoor worship. We can't do it without about 20 volunteers on Sunday morning. So as we get here, we start setting up. There's people that come early to help set up and people that greet you, people that help with the building monitors. And so we cannot do this without you. Um, Carrie Garner wasn't able to be here with us and I hope she'll get to share some time about the impact that um, leading the tweens has had on her. But I just want you to know a little bit of what she had to say. She shared it with me um, this morning. She, um, We've been challenged by how we get together with our children and our youth and our tweens. And we discovered first that Zoom worked for a little bit. Donna and Melissa Freeman and I went around in superhero capes and superhero masks and delivered um, the packets for our Zoom meetings to the kids. And she said, um, Carrie said she'd never seen her kids put on a superhero mask so fast. And they were so excited to see what we were learning about. Over the last few weeks, we've gotten to be in the parking lot together. We have dedicated people who are leading our youth and our tweens and our children in these lessons. And we could not do this without them. And her message was one of encouragement that she, one says, maybe sometimes we don't realize what a special group of kids we have here at this church and tweens and youth but also that we are planting seeds every day as we get to teach them and share our faith with them. And as they share our faith with us, because um, I've had a youth pastor who used to say, you know, the youth and children aren't just the future of our church. They are the church today. <laughs> they are still sharing their gifts with us. They're sharing their faith with us and we can learn from them. Um, so I hope if you are a volunteer with any of our children or tweens or youth, that you also realize the impact that you are having on these kids and on their faith lives. I hope um, that your hearts have resonated with some of these stories that have been told this morning. And I hope you continue to be proud of the ministry that you all do as a congregation and that you feel encouraged to support these ministries with not only your time and your talents, but also with your tithes and offerings. Over the last many months, as you've heard, you all have fed those who are physically and spiritually hungry. We've emphasized the importance of Christian education and community among our youngest. And we've been able to gather together for worship outdoors in a way that you probably never imagined that you would worship. And now I think this is just the beginning of ways we can gather in community in the future. As I've mentioned, every ministry that we do takes more than one or two people, more than one or two gifts to make it happen. It takes everyone. And I believe God is calling us to continue to do ministry in creative ways, and we need your help supporting these ministries. I want to remind you um, that we are in the final quarter of our fiscal year. That means 2020 is almost over. <laughs> yeah. But just because it's almost over, even though we can see the end headed towards 2021, we still have two and a half more months of ministry that we're doing in 2020. We're gonna to continue to support Methodist Family Health as they use our building to offer counseling services and support children and families. We're going to celebrate special Sundays like All Saints and Advent leading us to Christmas Eve. And we're gonna to continue to have small group meetings for people of all ages. And we couldn't do those things without your financial support. So as we transition from this time of sharing into our offering moment, I just wanna be um, real with you. I wanna share with you that on Sundays to meet our needs for mission and ministry, our offering collection needs to be about $3,500. And we've been not meeting that mark the last few months. So I just wanna encourage you that if you've been inspired by these gifts, these opportunities people have shared about, if you've been inspired by the work we've done, that you might think about giving in a new way in the next few months. I wanna assure you that the staff and the leadership team have cut down on expenses in every way that we can, and we are trying to be the best stewards of your resources. So I hope that today and in the next few weeks, you will prayerfully consider the opportunity to give to the congregation. There's multiple ways you can do that, whether that's through PayPal, especially if you're watching with us on Facebook, if that's by check, we have a debit credit card machine in the worship center. I want to say we cannot do all these things without your gifts and so I want to give thanks for the generosity that you have shown since before I became your pastor. If you're regularly giving, thank you for those gifts. If you feel as if you're able to step up your giving, I really would ask you to consider doing so. And finally, if you're 
in a situation where you're unable to give monetarily at the moment, I want you to know we covet your prayers and we know God is using you to serve and share the good news and witness to Christ. May God's spirit work within you so that you might trust God is moving in your life and in this community of faith. Let us pray together. God of power and glory, we come to your altar this morning offering our gifts and praying for your presence in a world that is hurting and divided. Much of what we see is chaos and confusion and anxiety, a world that desperately needs to glimpse your presence and glory. More than just our gifts of money, we pray our lives might be a window into your love and compassion. We pray that your light might shine through us into the world. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith as it is written in the Old and New Testaments, proclaiming who God is in our lives. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen.
what a blessing it has been to worship with you all today. I hope you will stick around for small groups for all ages. Again, adults will meet here. Youth, why don't y'all gather here and decide where you want to go? Fourth through seventh grade back there and in the back parking lot, our pre-K four through third graders. Um, want to mention that our pre-K four through 12th graders have been doing a study on the greatest showmen. So next week, um, Becca Poland is going to offer us some circus arts to go along with what they've been studying with the movie, The Greatest Showman. Um, that opportunity is available for everyone to um, stay and watch. And so we'll have a brief time of small group right after worship and then invite you all to stay for that as well. Um, may you go from this place trusting that God has called each of us to be servants. God has called us to be creative and imaginative in this time as a church and as people of faith and God will guide us on the way as we continue to serve God faithfully. Go in peace.